Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. In this video, we are going to be doing a deep dive into American foreign policy, of course, talking about all the latest news coming from, of course, China and Hong Kong, which we have a lot of personal experience covering on the ground. But when it comes to all the latest world news, something that is our forte, there definitely is a lot of very important, interesting updates that we will go over in this specific video. And one way for us to do this every single day for you for free is to have merchandise. And we have new bandanas, which for some reason Teesprings is calling neck gaiters. Now again, these are not face masks. They do not work like N95s. We have th three brand new bandanas. One with just the We Are Change logo on it. Another one that says Make Orwell Fiction again in red and also blue. And of course your purchases go toward supporting this independent news organization, which also has shirts like this shirt that's doing very well. <laughs> on our store which definitely sparks up some uh, interesting conversations if you have one of these but of course before splurging away on any of these items make sure that you have your food and water supply secured and are prepared for the turbulent times ahead now just jumping right into it there is a lot of important news coming from china that of course will have global ramifications on everyone and of course i'm not just talking about the latest outbreaks that china is trying to censor as our Already, many citizen journalists are being arrested for even just documenting new lockdowns that are happening right now for an estimated hundred million people, which it looks like China is treating just like they did in the same fashion when all of this started. Why, of course, the World Health Organization, along even with some mainstream media organizations that are tied into conglomerates that have businesses with China, that of course hide the truth away from you and the world. But this is not why we're talking about China right now. It is because of their latest actions against Hong Kong, the former independent sovereign UK territory that a couple years ago was handed over to the Chinese and there was a deal to have two different systems but under one country and now China's going back on that deal with pushing a new controversial security law which of course is all being done for the safety and security of its citizens, right? Yeah, um, I think if you uh, really know what's going on here you kind of see this for what it is. This is why we have seen parliament members in Hong Kong being dragged out a few days ago because under these new proposals, these new national security laws that according to many will end Hong Kong's territorial autonomy from China, which is supposed to still be taking place. Now, it's important to note here, the last time that the Chinese government tried to issue tough security laws in Hong Kong, it led to massive clashes in the streets, which of course we were therefore documenting as it was unfolding not so long ago. And that was over an extradition bill, which would allow the Chinese government to extradite Hong Kong citizens to the mainland, where most likely people would be put into concentration camps, labor camps, or have their organs harvested while receiving the death sentence for speaking out against a government. And now under these new proposed laws, it would prohibit such action, actions as treason, secession, sedition, or subversion of the Chinese state which essentially creates a blueprint for the thought police now in response to this the u.s state department of course is issuing a warning to china telling them not to do this trump has even threatened very strong retaliatory actions if quote beijing interferes with hong kong this of course definitely raises the rhetoric some u.s senators are even introducing a bill to sanction chinese officials if this law gets pushed through. All of this as, of course, the United States geopolitically positions itself stronger against China with a new $180 million to torpedo deal for Taiwan, country that China is bribing the World Health Organization not to even recognize as a legitimate country. This, of course, after just a few days ago where the Chinese military was literally staging exercises on how they would invade Taiwan. Taiwan answered back with their own military exercises about how to fight off a Chinese invasion. 
which during these very turbulent times, the likelihood of happening is increasing day by day, as of course the relationship between the Chinese and Americans is deteriorating. As you can see, this tit-for-tat foreign policy unfolding, only escalating and creating a worse-off dangerous situation for the rest of the world, where there should be diplomacy, there are aggressive measures, as of course many countries including Japan are building up and preparing militarily for a conflict which I see as inevitable. And who's the winner out of all of this? Well, the military industrial complex companies like Nike, Tutu, five that of course also have close ties to corporations like sony now one thing to really consider here is of course that historically we always have this thing called the tacitus trap an emerging superpower threatening the hegemony of that number one position that is something that many analysts are saying is happening right now between China and, of course, the United States. And historically, it's also important to understand here that major wars usually start with trade wars, currency wars, and then, of course, actual hot wars. And right now, we're in the economic phase of this conflict. As with these rising tensions, even the stocks are that are artificially inflated by the Federal Reserve are even responding negatively to. Donald Trump even yesterday went on a tweet storm accusing China, saying that they could have easily stopped the plague, saying that they are on a massive disinformation campaign, hoping to, of course, have Joe Biden win so they could, quote, continue to rip off the United States as they have done for decades. And finally, Financially, there definitely will be a global reckoning as many people are realizing that the United States is dependent on China for many of its manufactured slave goods, also including a lot of medical equipment like PPE, antibiotics, and other medicines that are no longer produced here in the United States. And when you're in a big economic conflict with a country that wants to take your spot as number one in the world, it's not that intelligent to give all of your manufacturing power to them. And with this revelation and with this latest sickness, it reveals a lot of these problems that there's going to be major significant significant moves made because of. With this correction, well, this will definitely lead to very interesting times as we're seeing even now in the market, things like Bitcoin and bullion even go down as globally. There are assessments that $82 trillion have been wiped off from the global economy. And here in the United States, there are estimates that $360 billion of revenue has been completely lost because of this sickness that, of course, many people point to China for, accusing them that they could have easily prevented it. And there is some criticism there that I think is legitimate, especially with the way that the Chinese government handled this, arresting doctors and journalists for reporting on information why, of course, hiding it from the rest of the world. And yet we still don't know the full truth, ramifications, and consequences of what the world is dealing with, but we sure do know it's best to prepare for the worst. And this is why in previous videos we laid out a potential theory out there that China could be using this entire situation, regardless of their involvement in either preventing it or making it worse, as an opportunity to buy up a lot of resources that are now going to be very cheap. Why? Because of the global economic devastation. Again, this is just a theory, but we are seeing an aspect of it being played out right now as even NATO is officially, quote, sounding the alarm and releasing information warning people about Chinese companies that are going to be swooping in right now with, quote, buckets of cash to buy up strategic assets and stakes in major companies in the United States and Europe. And already because of the previous president here in, in the United States and also a lot of incentives by the Chinese government and banks giving out zero interest loans, many Chinese people already throughout the last few years have bought up a large stake of American real estate businesses. And there is no question to see their expansion in major cities all over the Western world. There's no denying it. Now, if you remember also, a few weeks ago, we warned you and told you to look in the Caribbean when it comes to another potential conflict point between China and the United States, as of course, we reported on the United States sending in more military hardware and naval fleets down into that region to allegedly 
go after drug cartels. And in reality, it was another geopolitical move against Venezuela, which is a major close ally with China. Another major close ally with China is, of course, Iran, a country that has even questioned China's own handling of this entire situation. But regardless of that, those are the alliances that people need to be made aware of, especially with as the situation becomes more drastic in the Caribbean, as the Iranians are sending in their fuel tankers in order to break the U.S. sanctions, which the United States is planning on blocking while Venezuela is saying that it will protect these Iranian oil tankers with, of course, its military ships and planes. And if there is an escalation, you could bet that it will be yet another proxy war that's happening between China and and of course the United States. Now here, geopolitically, if two countries want to do business with each other, there should be nothing stopping them. And it is important to highlight here, the United States is waging economic war on Iran and Venezuela, which is having very bad consequences for its citizenry. It's increasing poverty, increasing suffering, and only making the situation worse for innocent civilians in those countries during these difficult times. Now, when these oil tankers get to Venezuela, it will be interesting to see how the United States will respond. We, of course, will be covering this very closely. We should all hope that an escalation doesn't unfold here. Countries should have the right to trade with each other. They already have been economically devastated by U.S. American foreign policy, which I see is backwards. According to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, this is all happening because of China assisting Iran with their gas for gold program, which want to escape U.S. sanctions. In my opinion, the sanctions are ridiculous. They don't work since, of course, the main theory behind them is that if you hurt enough civilians economically, they will revolt, protest, and of course, overthrow the government. That is not in favor of American foreign policy. That's pretty much the logical thinking behind U.S. sanctions. And historically, when you look at Cuba, when you look at other countries, they don't work. They, they haven't been working in Venezuela and they only cause more pain and havoc. And to me, this is a policy that is worth giving up and enforcing them is illogical in my opinion. If you see an argument why it's not illogical, let us know in the comment section below. We definitely would appreciate any counter claim, belief, or evidence that you show us and suggest to us. But so far, when you look at American foreign policy, you could just as easily criticize it as Chinese foreign policy. Whenever you have grand states ambitious for power, you usually have a lot of pain and suffering behind it and seeing these two global world powers butt heads especially during this time is to me idiotic stupid and pointless and all should be done to promote diplomacy peace and prevent a bigger conflict from unfolding i think we should all be adults here but that's not the world that we're living in that's the situation that we outlined for you. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section below. I always appreciate all the feedback, all the constructive criticism, and of course, you amazing human beings watching this video, and most importantly, sharing it with your friends and family members, because otherwise, no one else would see this video at all. If you enjoyed it, share it. And this is why. Love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.